Hey, it's Don, the Austin Professor. Today I thought I would talk a little bit about how you're looking at your business, what, what you feel your business is. There's a big difference between wanting to make money and wanting to be a business or your own entity or corporation. A lot of people just want to make money and pay their bills and they're not worried about the big aspect, the big picture of having your own company, your own thing going on. They're just looking month by month and worrying about you know paying the bills and, and just getting by each month. That's not the, the correct way or the correct mentality you need if you're going to want to do this for a long period of time and have longevity in doing this. You need to look ahead all the time. It can't just be a, a money maker. It has to be an investment in your life, your career, your business, your future. And that's what you need to look at it at. You don't just need to look at it, I'm going to pay my bills and that's that. If you really don't like what you're doing, this probably isn't going to be for you. You're not going to be invested in it. You're not going to feel good about what you're doing. You're just not going to take it as serious. A lot of people have the problem with stepping from working for somebody to working for yourself and trying to break the mentality of living paycheck to paycheck or living month by month based on you know uh, working for somebody. Uh, um, it's just not the same. You, you need to take it from a different mentality. And for us, literally, that's how we've done it. We literally look ahead. This is a business. This is an investment in our future, just as an education was, and just as you know, everything you do is an investment in your future. Like if you work for a company and you want to work for that company for 20, 30 years and earn your pension and earn retirement and earn increases and raises and pays, when you're working and having your own business, you don't have that aspect. You don't have somebody who's going to give you a raise or who's going to give you a bonus. It's all on you now. You have to have the mentality to be able to, to switch yourself off from working for somebody and thinking of it as, as you know, I'm going to earn an increase, I'm going to earn a raise, I'm going to earn a bonus. The only way you're going to do that is if you do it all yourself if you're doing eBay, Amazon, and, and all the other sites that are out there right now. You have to look at it from a standpoint of, of a business, a business endeavor. You've got to keep information. You've got to track your sales and track your history and track what you're doing and, and, and look at your, your sales and find out where you're, you're going wrong and fix those issues. It's the only way that's going to fix it. You can't allow and, and, and think someone else is going to fix it like they did when you worked for somebody else. You have to be, you be the all-around person that knows every aspect of the business to succeed fully and cut the ties finally and not work for anybody. And, and along with you know how you're doing your, your business, when you're starting off, one thing you don't want to do is, is keyhole yourself into lower prices on items. And one mistake that we used to make in the past is undervaluing your items, thinking that you can't get a top dollar for some items or, or worrying about how much you're charging based on other people. What you need, though, is to do future projections and look to the future, not just a year in advance, but two, three years in advance. Are you going to be doing this in, in three years? Are you going to have to go back to working for somebody else? What, what's your goals? What's your plans? You need to figure all that out. You, you can't just jump lightly into something that's going to affect your income, your all your income for the for you know paying your bills to handle and, and to live on. You have to know what you're doing enough and know where you're going and have ways to fix this. Start off small if that's what you got to do. Start off in one category that's cheaper to get and can at least give you the start and the foothold in the business to advance. Once you get to a certain point or have so many listings up, it's not nearly as as worrisome to you you and you can kind of see the light you know at the end of the tunnel coming up um, for us you know I think once we hit 10,000 listings or thereabouts things changed very drastically we weren't in a rush we didn't take all the offers when they got them um, we were able to counter all the time and turn down people left and right because we've got the money coming I'm not as much of a hurry to sell anything anymore I don't care if it sits on a shelf for months on end it, it's not a huge concern because it's so little to actually list it um, and again, if for what we pay for the items, the items are so cheap that for us it, it doesn't matter. It's not a huge ordeal if we wait a little while to sell it. I know if you have hundreds into an item and you're, you want to flip it for a hundred bucks, something like that would be wanting something you'd want to do quickly and get rid of it real quick so you're not losing out and having hundreds of dollars sit here. But if I'm having hundreds of dollars sit here, chances are I've got hundreds of items that I spent that couple hundred dollars on so I can not worry about it. I've probably sold part of it already. That's literally what we do all the time is I'll list something, I'll buy a big lot of something, I'll sell a couple of higher end items right away and we'll get our money back and already make a profit from you know the very first week we have it, even sometimes the very first day I have it. 
um, like the, the, the hi-fi items that I just showed in another video. I put a couple of those up. I sold one right off the bat for $60, bucks, $59.99 immediately, right off the bat within an hour of putting it up, and it paid for the lot. I already made a $40 profit after fees and after I paid the $5 for the item. It's, it's a no-brainer. You, you pay for it right away the way we do the business. That's our business model. That's our 90-day model after that. It sits on a shelf. We schedule it in you know, somewhere in a 90-day time frame or write it down somewhere in the future if it's a holiday item that we want to set for a longer time. And then that sits in a separate shelf for us. But that's how we do it. That's how we look ahead. That's how we make sure we have the merchandise. That's how we know we have the right merchandise for the right time of the year, the right month of the year, whatever the case may be. We've tracked all this. We know what's going to sell you know, in certain times of the year. We want to sway from certain kinds of clothing or certain kinds of shoes or certain kinds of books or certain kinds of electronics or collectibles in general. We might do a big push in certain areas um, because the collectibles market has different types of people that collect as opposed to people that buy clothing and stuff. It's not based on a seasonal sway of things. It's not based on a seasonal sway for like Christmas shopping or seasonal sway for summer clothing or seasonal sway for winter clothing. It's not based on that. Collectors collect. They collect all year round. They want the good deal. They want to advance their collection. No matter what day of the week it is or what month it is or what year it is, if they collect, they're going to collect it regardless. They're always going to be looking for that score, trying to find the killer deal that no one else is looking for. And summer months are just as good for, as, as any other month for looking for the collectibles. Um, and, and that's for future use. We, we looked ahead when we started with clothing and looked what could we do, higher profit on, and, and not lack sales through the summer. And again, paper, uh, media, vintage media, vintage movie movie collectibles, um, records, they sell throughout the year. Audiophiles don't care as much what time of year it is. Yeah, some might not be on as much, but again, with audiophiles, they're, na they're international. Most of our best records go overseas to England. England, there is no real big difference in summer or winter. They have so many given not like our country where you know you're lucky to get a vacation and most other countries in Europe they get vacations constantly they don't work as many hours a week as us so they have more time to buy it so stuff from overseas the people from overseas buy more throughout the year all the time than than many Americans do in some cases so I don't worry we've switched as I said look at your business as not a seasonal not a month by month basis but look at it as a future investment in your career your business your life your lifelong career this could be for us now, it's going on five years now that we've been doing this, and all what's happened is it's increased to a point where we're making more and more and more money, and we're doing more and more things. We only started off with eBay, and we branched out to you know Discogs, to Amazon, to Etsy, to Poshmark. We do Craigslist sometimes. Recently, we've done uh, things on Facebook Marketplace. Um, we do some of the sci-fi and, and uh, goth places and, and sites that do things like that. There's tattoo sites that take artwork, you know, on commission basis. There's all kinds of places that you can advance your business in. For us, we we've done some, you know, and in artwork too. Uh, you just got to take it from a point and say, what do I want to get out of my life? Where do I want to take my business from the start? Don't look at it from month by month. You're going to lose that time that you did month by month when you realize that, hey, I can do this as a living and move on with my life and not worry about, you know, whatever other people are doing or a traditional job. Stop working for somebody and you can do your own thing. That's what we've done and it, it's, it's been a shocker to us, I have to say. It was hard to get used to waking up in the morning and not having to be somewhere or worrying about the boss calling because, holy cow, I overslept or whatever the case may be. But uh, just some words of wisdom. Um, hopefully that uh, gives you some ideas and hopefully it helps you somewhat. Uh, if you liked it, please hit the like button for me below. Comment, subscribe, and tell a friend.